From earlier videos, we saw how plants can take carbon dioxide from the air and water from the soil and, using sunlight, rebuild them into high energy glucose molecules. And oxygen molecules which are released into the air. This process is called photosynthesis. Inside the plant, enzymes can then extract a water molecule from two of these monosaccharide glucose molecules and join them together to form a disaccharide, maltose. This water extraction is called condensation. When the condensation is repeated many times, thousands of glucose molecules can join together to form a long polysaccharide molecule of starch. Because glucose is a high energy molecule, starch's long chains act as an energy store for the plant and for us. When eaten, enzymes in our body can insert water molecules back into the places where they were originally extracted. This water reinsertion is called hydrolysis. Hydrolysis steadily releases glucose molecules which are carried by our bloodstream to our cells and reacted with oxygen breathed in from the air to release the energy that we need to walk, talk and think. This burning of glucose in our cells is called respiration. You can think of starch as a kind of energy bank account from which your body makes progressive little glucose withdrawals over time. Plants' ability to make glucose molecules, then string them together into these long chains of mini food snacks, is remarkable. But plants have another trick up their sleeve. Can you spot the carbon atoms outside the cyclic rings? If every second glucose molecule is flipped 180 degrees, so that these bits are on opposite sides, before the glycosidic bonds are formed, then a different kind of polysaccharide is made. This shows how the glycosidic bonds, they're at the points where the water is extracted, are created on alternating sides of the molecule. Hundreds or thousands of glucose molecules can join end to end to build long chained molecules of a substance called cellulose. The different geometry of cellulose molecules, thus with their glycosidic bonds on alternating sides, gives them very different properties to starch. They're straighter, stiffer, and they don't branch so they can stack closer to each other. Cellulose molecules are more like rods than the floppy starch ones. They are also more attracted to each other, so they glue together to make cellulose a much stronger physical substance. These attractions between molecules even have a name, hydrogen bonds, but to explain how they work requires another video just for them. You can think of hydrogen bonds as being like the force of butter holding layers of bread together. The tight and tough structure of cellulose also keeps water molecules out, making cellulose waterproof. What a substance! Cellulose is useful. Ropes can be made of cellulose. You might be writing on cellulose now, or even wearing some. Paper and cotton are both examples of cellulose. You may live in a cellulose house, because wood is mostly made of it. Being strong and waterproof, cellulose is very handy as a material to build houses, because it's structurally sound, and it keeps the rain out. This property is good for plants too as they can keep their shape, and because cellulose doesn't suffer from hydrolysis like starch, they don't get soggy when it rains. A campfire is mostly a cellulose fire, 
When it burns, you can see and feel the energy of the cellulose molecules' bonds being released. The strong grip between cellulose molecules stops us from being able to pull them apart and digest them. Otherwise, we could eat wood chips instead of muesli for breakfast. And take advantage of all that energy inside cellulose. But termites can eat wood for food because they've got the right enzymes in their gut to break down the cellulose. The enzyme that they use is called cellulase. Enzymes are usually called the name of the molecule whose reaction they help, with an ase at the end. And cows can digest the cellulose in grass, but they need four stomachs to do it, because cellulose is such a tough molecule. Even though we can't digest cellulose, we still ingest lots when we eat grains. For example, wheat grain has a soft starch inside which is extracted to become flour, and a tough outside called the husk or bran, which contains lots of cellulose and protects the seeds before they germinate. A bit like the seeds own little wooden hut. When we eat grain or veggies, the cellulose molecules go straight through undigested and they can even help clean our insides to keep food moving through our body. Some people add cellulose to their meals if they have a problem in that department, if you get my drift. On the other hand, the starch molecules are digested and go into our bloodstream as glucose to give us energy. This means that both starch and cellulose keep us moving, but in different ways. You can think of cellulose as the Swiss army knife of molecules. It has so many uses. Shelter, clothing, rope, writing, dietary supplement, and other uses we haven't even mentioned. No wonder it's the most abundant biological substance on Earth. It's pure genius.